You have to say accept. Ani Nindawe Maganajo, hello, my relatives. Benesi Kwe Nijinakaz, Makwando Dam. Hermanos, Hermanos. I want to say hello to you and my brothers and sisters, compañeros, compañeras in Cuba, and uh, send greetings to you from the far north where I live up here on the White Earth Reservation with Anishinaabe people in northern Minnesota in the deep north. I send greetings to you and grat gratitude for my memories when I was in your territory. 1978, I came for the International Council of Youth and saw so many other indigenous and people of color in your beautiful country. And I'm ever grateful for that memory that I've had there. And my heart has always been with you, Cuba, since that time. I also want to say that I had many good sisters and brothers that went there for school at different times, and particularly my sister, Ingrid Washinawatokel Isa, who met the love of her life and learned so much with the blessings of you and your school system and your government. So I just want to express gratitude to you, Cuba, for being you, for being a tough country, and, and for being a, a, an example for all of us to be courageous and to stick with what we believe. You know, since I was last there, a lot has happened in my life. I've spent most of my life working uh, in my own community and in other indigenous communities, fighting off the, the Windigos or the capitalist structure that comes to take our land and take our life and take our water. I have, uh, you know what happens is that when you lose a sister or a brother, you often take up their work. When you lose a sister or brother, you take their work up. And then together you all walk together, you know, towards those paths of, of taking on these battles. Um, so I have, I have fought uranium mining in the Southwestern United States for many years until in 1982, uh, they closed down the uranium mines on the Navajo reservation and closed down the uranium mills and the people were able to uh, drink their water again. The people were able to, to live their lives. And then I worked uh, after I saw you, I worked up at, uh, on the Navajo reservation and then I moved to the Pine Ridge reservation in South Dakota. And I worked there on uranium mining again, you know, fighting off the, the big corporations that come to take our land. But most of my life has been on my own reservation, the White Earth Reservation, where we have so much water and so much wild rice and, and so many people and, uh, that are good people. And uh, we have fought to keep our, our wild rice, to keep it from being genetically engineered by the University of Minnesota and by corporations. We fought that and we're successful in our battle. And uh, we fought off many, many projects that had come to our territory, joining with other Anishinaabe people and uh, other water protectors. We became people who fought pipelines and water protectors. I guess that's what we are formally called uh, under a, a hail of rubber, rubber bullets and, and the pipeline battles of our territory. You know, fossil fuels is, is a dirty thing. And uh, it is time really to move from fossil fuel economy because addictions make, uh, make you, have you make bad decisions. Well, in the United States, in part because the United States did not want to do business with Venezuela, the United States moved towards importing tar sands oil from Canada. And those imports, those imports uh, are blood oil. From the beginning in the indigenous territories in the North to Minnesota, where we fought for eight years against a pipeline project. We defeated one pipeline project, the Sandpiper, which is a tar sands oil pipeline. And then uh, now they have put in a pipeline called Line 3, which is a tar sands oil pipeline that they call a replacement. And I would, what I would say is that the, Venezuela, the country of Venezuela has long exported oil, but the United States did not want to pay a fair price. And so instead they forced these pipelines through our territory. And so I stand in the people in solidarity with people of other countries who want to protect their water and want to have their life on their own terms. But um, we have fought for a long time on this and fought for our rice. And I have been inspired in the privilege of my life by, by many movements, including your movements and the movements of the Zapatistas 
And, uh, you know, I've always been inspired by international movements. And so I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful for this moment that I can talk to you in a different country and we could share our struggles. And what I want to say is, is that, you know, we will be fighting over these rocks and pipes and oil for the rest of our lives, unless we become the people that take the path. You know, in our teachings, we have this path, which is called the green path. It is said at this point in time that as Anishinaabe people, we have a choice between two paths. One path they said would be well-worn, but it would be scorched. And the other path they said would be green. And they ask us which path we should embark upon. And for all of us, it is best to take the green path. There is enough fossil fuels in the world. There is enough pollution in the world. And there is enough military in the world. It is time to find a path towards peace and a path towards organic agriculture, local food economies, local energy economies, and uh, local health economies. And much of that Cuba has. You know, I've seen writing about your sustainable agriculture and have always admired, you know, the struggles you have gone through and yet also admire that you have retained agriculture in a way that is, uh, is good, is a good. And, uh, you know, there is something about these hard times when in the moments of a pandemic, the world is shaken and all things shift around us. And as we look around, there are catastrophes on all sides of us. So now is really the time to put our good hearts and minds together and make a good future for our children. You know, a good future where we can breathe the air and drink the water and eat the fish and have our local fruits and our local vegetables from our gardens. And that's the kind of future I'd like to see made with Cuba. You know, I'm grateful to you for your leadership in this world. And as I look as a indigenous woman from the far north to, the, to you in the south, in the global south, I say, gracias, miigwech. I say thank you for your courage and ask you to know that in, in my heart, I think often of you, Cuba, and remember my great sister, Ingrid Washin Watok Elisa, who loved you dearly, as I do. Miigwech, thank you so for your time. Thank you, miigwech.